Lavanya is an electrical engineer turned professional storyteller. She's very happy that she makes better and long lasting connections through stories rather than electrical wires. Lavanya's story journey in the last 10 years has given her the opportunity to work with adults, senior citizens, teenagers, and young children, helping them connect to themselves and the things around them through stories. Tailscope, her storytelling organization, has also been involved in the grassroots level training sessions for teachers and parents in both India and abroad. And so, without further ado, I would like to invite Lavanya Prasad. Welcome, Lavanya, to Itihas Ki Panno Se. Thank you so much, Sarita. So excited to be here today, to be sharing Thank this wonderful story. Thank you so much. And I can see that you're really in the characters. Wonderful. So without letting our uh, audience wait anymore, I think I'll just put off my video and hand it over to you for this amazing story. Enjoy, Thanks. everyone. 412 years and four days before today. The year was 1608 and August 24th. That was the day when the Britishers set their foot for the first time in India. Mesmerized they were to look at the beauty and the wealth of the country. And they could not go back without the thought of coming back and making India their own. Hundred years later, all this, the dreams of the British, started to happen. King Vijaya Ranga Chokkanada Nayakar, the ruler of the Thunga Nagaram, Madurai, where Tamil flourished, was having sleepless nights. The 72 Paliams, or the sub-kingdoms, the unusual harmony that existed between the 72 sub-kingdoms of his was no more. The Britishers had played really well targeting the unity, creating distances, and hence the discrepancy. Well, it was not very easy or difficult for them, I should say, with the help of Arkot Nawab to take over Madurai. And they even managed to schemingly kill the king. This was in the year 1730, in the same year, a hundred kilometers from the city of Madurai was the Ramanathapuram district. And there, the king, Chellamuttu Sedupati, and the queen, Muttamal Nachiyar, had given birth to a beautiful baby girl. Ketiala Sedia, Nama Chellamutta Yavuko, Nachi Amako, Potapala Bondar Kamala. Ayo, Pavo, Atachi, Potapula, Adi, then Yella Vesri, ha, Yenga Yellaversi Yar in the Rivala. Kati kutta chanda, vira chanda, yana yetong, kudara yetong, vicharuva, yellatrium, prama the perti purva hala, yanga velunachia. Velunachia was her name. The princess of Ramanadapuram, who was trained in the warfare just like any other prince would be. When she was just 16 years old, her hand was given in marriage to the king of Shivaganga Chimai, Muttuvadganathar. And she became not only the queen to the land, but also an elder daughter to most of the families in Ramanadapuram. She was so well versed in the political affairs that the king would not make a political decision without consulting with the queen. Such was her fame. The king and the queen ruled Shivaganga Chimai so well with the support of Marudu brothers, Periya Marudu and Chinna Marudu, who were like pillars of support to them. Shivaganga Chimai flourished. Well, the Britishers did not fail to sniff the fragments of the riches in the land, richness in the land. And promptly, they sent Colonel Bonjo who came in and threatened the king and the queen with his British English. Ah, we have taken the complete rights over your land from our court Nawab. If you would wish to continue to rule this land of yours, you better pay all 
the taxes that you failed to pay all these years and continue paying the taxes for the two. Do you get it? The king and the queen, what was he said? King Muttumurganadar stood there, not understanding a single word of what Colonel Bonjo had just said. But then out came Velunachia. She looked at Colonel Bonjo and she said, Mind your words, Mr. Bonjo. Sushichit samsarikanam. Matlade no ante, alo sitchi matladi. Zaman samalke. English is just a language. Gyan nahi. Yaha, jine kilye. Aapko, hamare bashe ko sikna bhot zaruri hai. Mudalil, tamilil pesa katrukund piraging varangal. She knew seven languages. Kovile kati, goburam kati. Satiram Kati Savari Kati Wild the Kulavada Angle Tavidar Kulam Vari Vendumam Vari Udalil Adaini Purindu Kul Nadodi Parangi Urekum Karangal Yamadu Sindum Virva Yamadu Payum Nadakal Yamadu Odum Vaikalum Yamadu Kapam Vendumam Kapam Kapam Vendumam Kapam Ur Appamukida Yadu Vari Kate Kudovari you came in as a trader. Do not get greedy and don't get into the limits of India. She warned him. And there Colonel Bonjo stood spellbound, looking at the queen who he knew was more fierce, more powerful than most other kings that he had seen in India. And the Britishers, did not waste even a single minute after that. They very schemingly killed King Muttuvadganadar when he was praying in the temple. Well, their calculation was a little different. They thought when the king died, Velunachia, like any other woman of that time, would jump into the funeral pyre and give away her life. They were more scared than Velunachia than the king. Because she was capable of taking thousand lives with that khalari. But Velu Nachiyar stood there in front of her husband's corpse. She looked at him and made an oath. Or vaira thaliye yen kharitil pootiya muttu vadu ganadane ungal meetha anai. In the thai manna ivargal edam irindu naan meet edupen. I will save my land from these Britishers was her oath. And there along with her 10 year old daughter. She escaped out of her land upon the advice of the Marudu brothers, but with a very heavy heart. She knew that if she had to come back, then she had to be unbeatable. Her war strategy will have to be such that she will have to sweep the Britishers away of their feet. A queen, along with her daughter, on the run. Do you think that the Britishers would stop? No. They had spies everywhere. They were doing all that they can to catch that queen alive. She was not able to stay in a place for more than a few weeks. She was always on the run, waiting to find that moment to save her people. It was on one such time. When she was really tired of running away from the British, she was lying on the floor of a forest, panting for thirst and hungry and crying out for help. Help did come in the form of a shepherdess. Her name was Udayal. Udayal came in, gave water, saved the queen and made her escape. And when the Britishers came in and questioned her about the whereabouts of the queen, she refused to open her mouth. They cut her limbs, they cut her legs, they even chopped her head. That was the first true sacrifice in the Shivaganga Chimai war. Well, when Velunachiar came to know of this sacrifice, her heart bled. But it was this incident that made her do something that nobody else had thought of before. If one shepherdess woman in my land has such courage, then how much will all the women club together will have? 
she decided to form a woman army. She was still in touch with her land. So without the Britishers knowing, in the next eight years, Velunachiar called in the women from her land to the place that she was in secretly and formed a big padal army of 5,000 women and she trained them in the warfare. She named this army Udayal Padai after the Udayal, the shepherdess who gave her life to save the queen and the land. Looking at this, all the other sub-kingdoms were mesmerized and they offered help. But the greatest help came through Hyder Ali, who was the king of Mysore. Well, he promised to give Velunachiar 12 birangis, 500 rifles and 5,000 foot soldiers. He called her his sister. Udayal, with the Udayal Padai, Velunachiar requested Hyder Ali to declare the Anglo-Mysore War too, so that she could turn the eyes of the British to the Mysore War. And when Hyder Ali did that, she knew that it was the right time to march to her land. With the Marudu brothers, Periya Marudu and Chinna Marudu by her side, they decided to attack the land from the three sides. From the left will attack Periya Marudu. From the right will attack Chinna Marudu. And she decided to go in the center to Shivagangai with her Udayal Padai, the 5,000 women that she had trained. But it was not very easy to get into Shivagangai because it was the time of Navratri. And since the Anglo-Mysore war was already happening, half of the British soldiers had gone there. And so all the other British soldiers were very alert, especially not to let anybody near the Rajarajeshwari temple during the time of Navratri. You know why? Because that is where, just right beside the temple, was the weapon repository of the Britishers. They had stored all their weapons there. And they didn't want any spies from the land to come and know that. Well, but as was the custom, the women of the land demanded that they will have to go and light lamps on the day of Saraswati Puja in the Raja Rajeshwari temple. And so they had to oblige. They said, all right, we will let only the women go. They can come in and light lamps. Well, it came as a blessing to Velu Nachiyar. Now, I will have to tell you something else here. In the Udayal Padai that she had made, there was one young woman who was just 18 years old and who had taken stolen the heart of the queen. And she was made the commander in chief of the Udayal Padai army. Her name was Kuili. Kuili was somebody who was ready to sacrifice her life for the queen and for her land. And so when the Britishers announced that the women can get in and light lamps on the day of Saraswati Puja, she marched Velu Nachir along with all the Udayal Padai that she had, decked up in nice sari, but hiding knives and swords inside them. They marched towards the temple. The British soldiers were standing there and watching all the women light the lamps from all the stairs that led to the temple. But what they failed to notice was, there was one young woman who was taking the lamp and pouring the oil on top of her. They failed to notice this. And she was quietly walking towards the backside of the temple. And when all the women had gathered inside the temple, Velu Nachiar found the right time and she gave out a cry. And all the women took out the sword and the knife from their sari and started slashing the Britishers. Nobody expected this. This was a surprise attack and women, of all people, women attacking the Britishers. Before they could get their energy, somebody ran to Colonel Bonjo and told him what was happening. Colonel Bonjo immediately ordered all the people to get into the weapon repository, grab the rifle and shoot all these women until they were dead. But it was a bit tad late. 
Before they could reach there, they heard this loud blast, a blast that shook almost 100 kilometers, that was heard almost 100 kilometers surrounding Shivaganga. Kuili, the 18-year-old young woman, smeared herself completely with the oil from the lamp, walked into the weapon repository, lit herself up, and fell into the gunpowder that was heaped there. She destroyed the British repository, weapon repository, in just a second. Most people believe that it was only during the Second World War that the suicide squads came into being. But this was the first that nobody knows. It was not very difficult for Velu Nachiyar and her Udayal Padai to fight the Britishers and win over them on the Vijayadasami day. The victory of good over evil happened again in history. And she stood there as all the other people were rejoicing over the victory. The king, the queen, Velu Nachiyar, she stood there, tears in her eyes, paying respect to the two women without whose sacrifice this victory could not have been possible. Even today, if you go to Shivagangai, you will see this Vettudayal Kaliamman Kovil, a temple that she built for the shepherdess who gave her life. And today, she stands there as Kali Amman Durga. People still go and worship her. And there is a beautiful memorial for Kuili as well. My dear friends, you all know the story of Jansi Kirani. Well, it was very much popularized by the Britishers themselves, along with her defeat. But not many knew of this queen, Velu Nachiar, who was the first queen to fight against the British and win her land back. Well, she ruled her land from 1780 to 1789, nine years. And after that, she crowned her daughter, the queen of the land, and she left to France to get a treatment for her ailment, her heart ailment. Did she come back? Yes, of course she did. She came back to her own land. And in the year 1796, on the 25th of December, when she was 66 years old, the queen died in her land. When I was looking for this story, and as I was reading this story, one thing came to my mind. I love Mahakavi Bharatiyar and all his poem about women. For some reason, I thought Mahakavi Bharatiyar wrote his famous lines with Velu Nachiyar in his mind. Narekudi kira parvam yedi. Did you think that I would fall? That was Felu Nachiar. Thank you so much.